So now we're uh, welcome to the next part of this video series. This is actually part six um, out of twelve. Um, we're not quite halfway there, but we're getting there. Um, so uh, a vSphere, a vCenter, vCenter uh, server data center. Uh, you've got your vCenter server and your ESXi hosts. Um, your web client, you use your web client to talk to the server. The server talks to the host. Um, the ES, the the uh, there are a couple of agents uh, on each ESI, ESXi host. Um, the host daemon service and the VPXA daemon agent on the host talk uh, 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 talk back and forth with the VPXD daemon running on the vCenter server. Um, this is kind of how um, what you have here. So essentially, you've got your client uh, talking to the server, and the server talks to um, the, v, the, the VPXA agent. Your vSphere web client can also talk directly to your host. Um, now, if, if in lockdown mode, um, you, um, you remove the option to, v, to deal with the ESXi hosts directly, you have to go through the server. So your host daemon agent runs on your ESXi host. Um, it manages most of the operations of the host. Um, so, so say for example, normal things like um, shutdown and startup and, and logging and all of that, all that belongs to the host daemon agent. Um, the VPXA agent acts, uh, talks, uh, 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 Negotiates. Uh, it's an intermediary um, between the the VPXD process on the vCenter server and the host daemon process on the host to trigger specific events, tasks, updates, etc. Um, so you log into your vCenter server. You use the web client, um, and your vCenter server when you when you make a configuration change, like for example moving, um, creating a new VM, or deleting a VM, or starting a VM, uh, vCenter server will take those commands, pass them to the ESXi hosts through the VPXA process. The VPXA, pro VPXA process will talk to the host daemon process and run things. This, at the same time, the vCenter database is also getting updates. Uh, you can also use, the, like I said, you can also use the vSphere client to talk directly to an EXX, ESXi host. Um, either uh, in, in the web, ho in the in the case of a web host, um, you're talking to it directly. In the case of your client software, it's doing the same thing. Um, they go straight to the host daemon process. The vCenter database is not updated. Um, now that uh, this is for the vCenter standalone client. Um, I've noticed uh, working with, in a previous iteration, uh, working with um, the uh, vCenter um, cl uh, host clients, um, uh, the the, v the vCenter web hosts, and the uh, sorry the the vSphere web hosts, the ES the ESXi web ESXi web hosts. I really wish they hadn't made it ESXi. Um, they must they it, it it's like they uh, they've saddled us with a tongue twister. Eh. Anyway. Um, you do those things directly. You can also kind of see them on the vCenter server. Um, that may be that the uh, the, the vCenter agent in 6.7 is more clever um, than um, it used to be. In any case, um, your vCenter inventory, um, you, you're, you're, you want to manage, manage all of this through your vCenter server um, because your vCenter inventory, it's a hierarchy of objects. Um, you you want to see, it, the point of centralization is, I mean it, it, you uh, like I like I said in a previous video, if you lose the vCenter server, you're not up a creek. You need to get your vCenter server back because it is the best way to do this. Um, the vCenter inventory manages everything as a hierarchy of objects, starting with a virtual data center, all one word, um, and then all of your objects are either containers or objects in uh, objects in containers, like say. Uh, the folder that you would create for um, for VMs and templates, the folder you would create for hosts and clusters, kind of a bit like this. 
So you got your vCenter server talking to your data center. Your data center, um, but your virtual data center is basically just an overarching container for your hosts, your VMs, your templates. Uh, and your hosts could be um, every the individual ESXi hosts, obviously. Um, and your VMs would include all the, the VMs you've built, including potentially um, the, the vCenter server appliance itself. And then all the templates that exist on those host machines. Um, so with a data center, you can move templates around, you can move VMs around. Um, basically treating your VMs and templates and virtual switches and things as uh, fungible commodities to move around back and forth between your ESXi hosts. And this is what things like vMotion, storage vMotion, um, distributed resource scheduler, things like that manage what each host is doing um, for the sake of improving performance, improving fault tolerance, uh, providing high, avail high availability, etc. Um, you can actually use manage more than one data center. Um, you could do these geographically, you could do these organizationally. In this instance, you've got one a data center in Chicago and a data center in Minneapolis. Um, if you had a big enough operation in one of these places, um, you could uh, literally have more than one data center in one physical location, or a data center for each client in each physical location. So you you divide you can divide these things as however you need to um, logically. Um, so in my next video, I'm going to talk about working with the virtual data center. Um, so thanks, and we'll keep going.